Welcome back to The Legal Brief, the show where we crush the various legal myths and misinformation surrounding various areas of the gun world. I'm your host, Adam Kraut, and today we're talking about how to stop gun control. Sharps Bros has taken their decades of experience in manufacturing and product design and created some of the most unique receivers for the AR-15, AR-10, and AK platform. With them, it's not just about unique rifles, it's also about excellence in craftsmanship. Starting from a rough sketch, then 3D modeled, and then finally machined from billet aluminum, Sharps Bros receivers are in a class of their own. To learn more, head over to sharpsbros.com. We're currently facing one of the largest attacks on the Second Amendment that we have ever faced. I get asked all the time, how do we stop this? What do I do to help protect our rights? Well, this guide is going to provide steps that you can actually take to make sure your voice is heard at both the state and federal levels. And make sure we put a stop to the assault on the Second Amendment. That they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! I was fortunate enough to get some help from a congressional staffer in formulating this, so you're getting inside information here. There's also a PDF guide in the description for you to follow. The first thing to know is, who represents you in Congress? After all, you want to talk to the people that actually represent you. If you're unsure, there's a website, whoismyrepresentative.com, where you go, plug in your zip code, and boom, tells you who your representatives are. If you're looking for information on state representatives, that can be found on your state legislature's website. The next step, have a plan. There are three main reasons why people contact their representatives. It's either to express support for something, voice opposition to something, or to find out where the representative stands on a particular issue. Depending upon what you're doing, the plan may vary. Since we're talking about stopping gun control, we're going to do this in the context of voicing opposition to more gun control. When you're calling about a particular bill, it's helpful to know whether the senator or representative is already a sponsor or co-sponsor of that bill. If you're not sure, congress.gov allows you to search for bills either by their number, by the name, or a general search term. Once you've found the bill, you can see if they are. So, for example, if we're searching for the bill pertaining to the proposed assault weapons ban by the term assault weapons ban, we'd be led to either the Senate bill, which is sponsored by everybody's favorite gun grabber, Dianne Feinstein, or the House bill, which is sponsored by Representative Cicilline. We can see the House version has 167 co-sponsors. Fortunately, as of the filming of this episode, my representative's not a co-sponsor. However, he got a phone call from me anyway. Both of the congressional staffers I mentioned before say that no matter if they support or oppose the bill, it's worth contacting your representative or senator to express your opinion. Okay, so now you know who your representative is, you have a plan of action, what you want to talk about, and you have a good idea where they stand on a particular bill or issue. Then what do you do? This is where you contact them. So how do you actually go about contacting your representatives? Well, there's several ways, including calling, emailing, social media, and even an in-person meeting. Mail and faxing are options too, but it's not suggested. Since mail has to be screened for security purposes, and it's 2018, who's still faxing things? I usually call. I've stored the DC office numbers for my federal representatives in my phone. It makes it easier to call about an issue while I'm heading from one place to another, since I don't actually have to look it up every time. You may want to consider doing the same. It takes all of a few minutes to contact them, and it's something you can do while driving to or from work, running errands, or even grabbing lunch. When you're calling, you'll be asked for information so they can log whether or not you're a constituent. No, this is not the NSA collecting data on you. Besides, they probably already have that. The person answering the phone is an entry-level staffer, whose job is to merely log your message or question and pass it along to a more senior-level staff. So don't waste time debating policy with them. Tell them how you feel, politely, and move on. The guide in the description even notes that they begin tallying calls immediately when they receive a large number of calls on a specific topic. Email or using the contact form on the representative's website are popular methods of communication in today's digital world. Some things to keep in mind. Emails or contact form messages are received and put into a constituent correspondence system, which then sorts the messages by type. In order to make your email or contact stand out, avoid form letters. Sending the same exact message that I and a hundred other people send means that it'll be lumped into one category and sent the same response. By sending an original message, it makes it more difficult for the system to sort, 
which means that your letter is more likely to be read by a staffer, which in turn means it may be passed around the office or even make it to the representative's desk. Both congressional staffers suggest that you include what type of action you want the representative to take. In the case of the assault weapons ban, we want them to oppose the bill. Social media. It's an awesome way for Congress members to communicate a message, but not such a great place to have a two-way conversation. On the surface, while it may look like you're talking directly to your representative, a number have their staff run the social media accounts. Even more problematic for them is identifying whether the people responding are even constituents. While it may be fun to tweet or leave messages on representatives' Facebook pages, it's unlikely to have any impact as opposed to calling or emailing. Worth noting, the state offices for federal officials do not have policy staff members on hand. Those are the people responsible for policy discussions on an issue. For that, you're going to have to contact the DC office. With the political uncertainty that's filling the air right now, you need to get involved. You can be sure that anti-gun individuals are not only contacting their representatives to express support for more gun control, but they're looking at every possible way to make it seem that the public at large supports that idea too. You need to pick up the phone, you need to write an email, or you need to stop by the local office. Get involved, make your voice heard. That's how we stop more gun control. Sick of bad information finding its way around the internet? Make sure you share this video with your friends. Don't forget to hit that like button, get subscribed, and consider supporting us via the links down in the description. If you haven't already, be sure to download the Gun Collective podcast on iTunes. We'd love to get your feedback on that. And as always, thanks for watching. The shirts worn in today's video on the Gun Collective have been provided by Patriot Patch. Closed captions have also been brought to you by Patriot Patch Company. Be sure to click the link in the video description to check out all of their great products, including their cleaning mats.